Hey everyone, welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen, and today we're going to look over the key terms for 3.1 themes and methods in developmental psychology. So if you've seen my videos before, this one is really just about the definitions and the examples. If you want to know more information about the uh, essential knowledge that you need to know for this section of Unit 3, I have a separate video where I go through that. I also have a link below to the full slideshow with all the information for th Unit 3, as well as a workbook that goes along with it. So if you like the content, please give me a like and a subscribe. That would really help me a lot. And leave me some comments just to let me know how you like these videos and if it's helping you in class. I really, I really appreciate hearing from you. And I always try to answer everybody. Okay, so let's go. Let's start with the key terms that we're going to look over. So we're going to look over these key terms. We're going to go each definition and uh, an example. We're going to start, these are all related to two CD questions for 3.1. CD question number one is explain how enduring themes inform, inform developmental psychology. And like I said, in another video, I'll go through the essential knowledge that you need to know to answer this question. The second question for 3.1 is describe ways cross-sectional and longitudinal research design methods used in developmental psychology inform understanding about behavior and mental processes. There's a separate video for this one as well with all the essential knowledge you might need for this question. Okay, but right now we're just going to look at the uh, vocab or the key terms for this section. So we're going to start with developmental psychology. So that is the study of how people grow, develop, and change throughout their lives. So focusing on physical, cognitive, social, and emotional development from infancy through old age. An example of this would be a developmental psychologist might study how early attachments to caregivers influence a person's relationship in adulthood, examining how social and emotional skills evolve over time. Next, we're going to look at is stability. So stability is the idea that some traits and behaviors remain relatively consistent throughout our lives. An example, a child who is naturally shy may continue to be reserved in social settings as an adult. Oops. Oh, sorry, missed one there. Change. So the concept that people can develop and grow leading to differences in traits and behaviors over time. A student who was once disorganized in school might become very disciplined and organized as an adult through habit and practice. I think I see a lot of my AP students happen. That happens to them too. <laughs> Nature. The belief that genetics and biological factors shape who we are, influence, influencing personality, abilities, and behavior. So an example, a person may inherit musical talent from their parents, making it easier for them to learn and enjoy playing an instrument. Then we have nurture. Nurture is the idea that our environment, upbringing, and experiences play a major role in shaping us. A child raised in a bilingual household may develop strong language skills and cultural awareness due to their environment. Now, if you remember nature and nurture, we've had in other videos before because we did do that in unit one, but it's always really good to review. Continuity. Continuity is the theory that development is a gradual, continuous process of adding skills and knowledge over time. So a child learning to read does so in stages, gradually increasing vocabulary and comprehension until they are fluent. I was a kindergarten teacher. I can attest to this. It is a gradual process, and I'm sure you keep seeing this with your own studies. Discontinuity, the belief that development occurs in distinct stages with changes in behavior and cognition happening in leaps. So for example, Piaget's theory of cognitive development, where children move through specific stages like pre-operational and concrete operational stages, and each have their own unique thinking abilities at each of these stages. Cross-sectional research, a research method that compares individuals of different ages at one specific point in time to identify age-related differences. So for example, a psychologist studying memory might test groups of 10-year-olds, 20-year-olds, and 40-year-olds on the same memory task to see how memory abilities vary by age. Longitudinal research. This is a research method that follows the same group of individuals over a long period of time, tracking changes and development over time. A researcher studying language development might observe a child or a group of children from ages 5 to 15, and they will note how their vocabulary and grammar skills are evolving. Okay, so now we're just going to go through each word, and I want you to try and think about what the definition is and an example. So de de ha, developmental psychology. Stability. Change. Nature. Nurture. 
Continuity. Discontinuity. Cross-sectional research. And longitudinal research. And that's the end of the key terms for 3.1. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it helpful. Please make sure to make your cards. Those little those slash cards are invaluable. I mean, they just they are so helpful when we're learning the key terms so that we can apply them later during the exam. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. I answer everyone. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. I really appreciate it. I will see you next time. Thank you.